Good morning, everyone. This is Pastor Paul Graham, and I'm your host on Bible Boot Camp, and it's a pleasure to be here with you this morning. This morning, we have entered into our 27th day of Bible Boot Camp. We are 27 days in. Wow. 27 days of hearing God, 27 days of listening, 27 days of revival. And this morning, we're not afraid to say that we are in revival. We are looking to God to help us, to walk with us, to be with us, and to bless us. And so we welcome you to our 27th day of Bible Boot Camp. And we believe that God has taken us 27 days. No hurt, no harm, no danger, some worries, some um, mistrust, but fully trusting in God. That's where we want to be. And so we are in revival. And being in revival, we're in a place where we're simply saying to God that we trust you in our lives and we need you in our lives. So this morning, I want to welcome you to Bible Boot Camp. Wake up and stretch your spiritual muscles and know that God is ever present with us. He is with us this morning. And we're asking you to, to allow him to handle your day. Allow him to take full control of your day. We believe and know that mornings are better when you talk to God first. Do you believe that? That's all we've been saying all uh, month long, that mornings are better when you talk to God first. So let's put him first. Let's make him first. And not only that, let's keep him first. He wants to be first in our lives. So we welcome you to another day of Bible Boot Camp. Let's bow our heads together as we look to him who is the author and finisher of our faith. Let's pray together. Father, again, we come before you thanking you for being an awesome God to us, a great God to us, a God that can do all things, a God that can take us places we've never been, and a God that forgives. This morning, we want to thank you, Lord, for waking us up this morning and starting us on our way and putting us in a place where we can see you. And so we're grateful that we have this opportunity. Bless us this morning and strengthen us in Jesus' name. Amen. And so this morning, we simply say, we are ready to be a part of this worship experience with him. I want to share something with you this morning. This morning, um, I wanted to uh, bring before you a beautiful, beautiful uh, text. And this beautiful text uh, that we were going through this whole uh this whole time this whole month was let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink i i, I like that before we go into our uh worship this morning because i believe there's a lot of people who are thirsty for jesus christ thirsty for something wanting something and this morning i believe that god wants us to thirst after him to to pant after him and this morning that's exactly what we're doing beautiful prayer this morning which simply says dear god today i woke up i'm healthy i'm alive and i'm blessed i apologize for all my complaining i'm truly grateful for all you've done in my life and that's exactly what we're saying that's exactly what we're living this morning true revival this morning <clears throat> i have a question for you my question simply asks uh what are you thankful for simply what are you thankful for? We've reached the end of the work week. That's right. We've reached the end of the work week. The, you know, thank God it's Friday. But we're also on the cusp of the Sabbath. And so in this, we, we believe that God has done so much for us this week. We've been asking for God, God for certain things. We've been saying, Lord, I need this. I want that. Can I? Please. And I'm sure that he's delivered for us. And so this morning, I ask you the question, what are you thankful for? What are you grateful for? What has God given you today that you're grateful for? And some say already that I'm alive, I'm sane, I'm loved, I'm thriving. Somebody said good health, life and good health. Others say waking up this morning. Uh, someone said humbleness. God is that kind of God that is still doing for us. And we've got to be thankful thanking him Sully is saying thank you for salvation Hollis on Periscope is saying thank you for peace of mind okay grateful grateful that he listens I love this 
someone said they want to thank him for his love. There's a beautiful song I want to share with you right now called uh, Withholding Nothing. And as you listen to this song, believe and know that God is the kind of God that will uh, ask us to give him our all. So today, are you giving him your all? I want to share with you a beautiful song called Withholding Nothing. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself away. I give myself away so you. I give myself away. I give myself.
withholding nothing. Withholding nothing. What are you giving to God today? What are you thankful for today? What are you saying to God uh, today? Are you saying that I'm giving you my stuff? I'm giving you my issues? I'm giving you my life? I'm, what are you giving God today? Maybe giving everybody other stuff, but you, but you're withholding from Him. But He's saying that I want you to give me my all today. Give Him your all. Give Him everything you've got. And I want to pray for you all today. I want to pray for you because I really believe that there's somebody here, someone listening that needs to give God your all, but you won't give God your all. I'm going to tell you why, because you're still stuck. You're still stuck in your sin. You're still stuck in, in a, a life where you feel like God won't forgive. You're still stuck in a rut somewhere. And God is simply saying to you right now that don't hold back. Don't hold back on me because I didn't hold back on you. Oh, Trust him that he can take care of your stuff. Trust him that he'll take care of your issues. Trust him because that's just the kind of God we serve. The kind of God that can help us in everything that we do. Don't hold back on God because he has not held back on you. I want to go into this text with you. I want to go into this text. I want to go into this text right now. Um, because uh, I believe that God wants us to know that he still washes away our sins. I believe he still washes away our sins. Uh, right now, I pray that God will dispatch his Holy Spirit right now into your lives, into our lives, so that you can get what this text is saying to us today. Father, I'm asking you that as we talk a little bit about your word, that we'll hear from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I want to share this with you. It's a text from Psalm 51. Psalm 51, an awesome text. And this text simply says, Have mercy upon me, O God. According to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot out my transgressions. Wash me th uh, thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Verse 3 says, For I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Verse 5 talks about our condition, right? Behold, I was shapen in iniquity. And in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts, and in the inward part thou shalt make me know wisdom. But it says, Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Wow. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. The word is telling us right now that we all were shaping in a certain way. We all were shaping in a certain way. We all have been born into this thing called sin. And I need you to know that even though we are born into this thing called sin, that God has a way of escape for each one of us. He wants us to know that we can be clean from our stuff. We can be cleansed from our stuff. And Psalm 51 is one of those texts, right, that, that, that we believe that David recognized his sinful state. He recognized that he has done something wrong. He recognized that he's messed up again. He recognized that he has sinned just like everybody else. But in messing up, he goes back and said, I need this gift. I need this gift. And that's what we've been talking about this week. I need this gift from God. And the word tells us that he, he asked God to clean him up through this text. He said, recognize, Lord, that I know it's you that judge. I know it's you that uh, when you speak, it's you judge correctly. And, and, and I recognize also that I'm, I'm messed up from the inward parts. But he said, but from the inward parts, show me some wisdom. Uh, show me something um, about myself. And God reaches into his heart and finds out there is something in him that's still good, that's still clean, that's still pure. 
Just like the Holy Spirit knows that there's something in you that's still clean, that's still pure. There's something in you that that if, if this Holy Spirit wasn't with you, then you wouldn't even be on this, this morning. That means you are yearning for something, you're thirsting for something, you're looking for something that God alone can give to you, that God alone can give to you, but you've got to ask. And the Word of God tells us, listen, the Word of God tells us, though your sins, this is Isaiah 1 verse 18, though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they are red like crimson, they shall become like wool. You've got to know, you've got to know that, that God can wash us and make us clean. He can make us whiter than snow. That text again for each one of you that knows that you've messed up in your life, that knows that you have made some errors in your life, that though your sins be like scarlet, though your sins be red, though your sins seems like it's covering you, the Bible says he can make it white as wool. And so when David comes before God, he comes before God simply saying, man, I've transgressed. He comes before God saying, I've messed up. He comes before God saying, I've done it again. He comes before God simply saying, I need a favor from you. He says, purge me with hyssop. Hmm. He says, and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me look. I want you to look at two things. Okay. I want you to look at two things in this verse. In this verse, it says, purge me with hyssop so I shall be clean. Wash me so I shall be whiter than snow. This day to day. You've got to understand that God can purge you and he can wash you. I like it, right? He can make you clean. Purging is from the inside. Washing is what it looks like on the outside. So if he purges us from the inside, that means we're going to be clean. But when he washes us from the outside, then from the outside, there's also a change. Wider than snow. Purging, inside. Washing, outside and God is simply saying I can do that for you I can do it for you no one else can do it for you no church can do it for you no family member can do it for you no friend no loved one no spouse just God and this is one of the reasons why we're in revival we're in revival because we believe it's going to take you it's going to take you to start this revival in your life and only you can be that individual that can start that. No one else can do it for you. And so today, I leave with you this text. A simple text that simply says that each one of us can be whiter than snow. The word of God says, Have mercy upon me, O Lord. O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to to the multitude of thy tender mercies, he is now begging and we are now begging. Wash me, wash me, blot out my transgressions. Wash me from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For the first thing he does is acknowledge his transgression and understands that his sins is ever before him. Against thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight that thou mightest be justified when thou speak and be clear when thou judgest. He says, Behold, I was shaped in iniquity and in sin my mother, my mother uh, uh, born me up. That's how I was born, in sin, shaped in iniquity. Behold, thou desires truth in the inward parts and in the, in, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. So purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me, wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let's get cleaned up today. Let's get washed up today. Let's get purged today. Let's get clean today. In Jesus' name, Father, we want to thank you for by the mere asking, you will clean us up. And today, we accept the challenge to be purged and to be washed. Thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to pray for you today. Can I pray for you? 
I want to pray for each one of you. I want to pray for each one of you. In this, I'm asking that as we uh, marinate on this song, write out your prayer requests. Write out your prayer requests so we can come back and pray for you. As we begin to pray for all those right now, we pray that God's Holy Spirit will comfort and guide. We're going to pray a, a general prayer, but remember that God still sees and he still answers our prayers. Let's pray together. Father God, we come before you thanking you for all that you've done. We thank you for life and we thank you for strength. We thank you for all that you've done. We thank you for all that you will do. Right now, we're praying for every individual who's calling you out right now to do what you do best in their lives. We're praying for Adam. We're praying for Nina. We're praying for Retha. We're praying for Crystal. We're praying for May. We're praying for Vernock. We're praying for Lenice. We're praying for Vivia. We're praying, Lord, that everything that they're asking for, that you will step in right on time. We're praying for uh, for Phil. We're praying for Sully. We're praying for Hollis, Siri. We're praying for Namika. We're praying, Lord, that you will do what you do best in our lives. We're asking now that you would take our sins and cleanse us. We're asking that you would take our situation and make us uh, trusting of you when you answer our prayers. We bring before you, Lord, our issues, our business, our films. We bring before you our families. We bring before you our children. We bring before you our habits, our children's habits. We bring before you, Lord, 
our strength and our weaknesses. We bring before you those who are still questioning you. We bring before you those who need employment. I bring before you those who are traveling this week. And I bring before you all those who are just simply saying thank you, Lord, for being a great God and a good God to us. We need financial blessings, but we need to be washed. And today, we come before you asking you to wash us and make us clean. We're pausing right now to say to you that we trust you with our prayers. But we trust everyone else who's reading other individuals' prayers and praying for them also. With much prayer, there's much power. And so we give ourselves over to you just one more time. Today, we are challenged to purge. We're challenged to be washed. We're challenged to be clean. So bless us this morning, I ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And so this morning, we welcome you to, to be challenged. This morning, we thank God for what he will do in our lives. And I want to share with you the thought of the day or the picture of the day. And the picture of the day simply says, God still heals and restores. God still heals and restores. I hope you believe that God still heals and restores because he still heals and he still restores. This morning, I want to thank you for joining us. Share with a friend that very thought and believe and know that God is still able to do for us what we can't do for ourselves. Let's withhold nothing from him. And again, as you like to give and donate to this ministry, just go to our website or go to pastorpaulgram.com, hit the give, and we'll be grateful for all that you can do as we look to build this ministry and to be better in this ministry. So be blessed, everyone. Be blessed, everyone. And let's purge and let's be clean today. Say this thing. I say.